This is Michael Popak with a legal AF hot take. Forget where's Waldo, where's Ivanka Trump, and Jared Kushner for that matter. And where is the money that they have, including $750 million or more they made while they were in office uh, as special assistants to the president? Where are they? They're over $1 billion in net worth and Donald Trump's uh, inability to raise enough scratch to put up allegedly $500 million for his bond. Why aren't the kids bailing them out? I mean, let's be frank. If Ivanka's last name wasn't Trump or now Kushner, she wouldn't have access to all this money. If she wasn't born, you know, a uh, byproduct of the, of the uh, lucky sperm club, she wouldn't have this money. And uh, now it looks like she's doing a good job of distancing herself from her father. Look, she's made it clear uh, based on her 8 million followers on Instagram that she just wants to be socialite Barbie, that she wants to live her best socialite Barbie life. She has no interest in helping Donald Trump uh, retake the White House. She made it clear in statements that have been made public that uh, she wants to leave politics in a rearview mirror and that uh, she has uh, told him, told her father, if you run for office, do it without me. I have no interest in doing that. She's more interested in posting Instagram photos of her wearing a dress sari at an Indian wealthy person's wedding or courtside at an NBA game or hanging out with, uh, you know, one of the Kardashians or something like that, you know, um, more likely to be photographed at her, you know, somewhere in Miami at some social event uh, that she's posed for than she is to ever help her father. But it begs the question, she was an executive in the company that ultimately got adjudged by Judge Angoran to be have committed persistent fraud. She just barely uh, avoided a fraud judgment against her only because many of the items that she was uh, directly involved with was um, before the statute of limitations. And it took Letitia James, the New York Attorney General, a little bit too long to bring her massive case. And some of the claims got stale and got old. There's only no reason that she's not a defendant in the case any longer, but she does have over a billion dollars. I mean, in 2017, and that's a long time ago in real estate world, in an economy world, she had to disclose because you had to do public disclosure when you enter the government, which is what they did as special advisors, Jared and her. They listed in 2017, $740 million in assets and $55 million of her having personal assets. So almost $800 million then. Just investigate in the stock market, let alone in the, re- the booming real estate market, she's well, they're well over a billion dollars today. No doubt. I mean, they forked up, uh, they forked out $30 million cash to buy some property in Miami and Indian Creek and billionaire, billionaire row um, and build a house there. And I haven't even talked yet and touched on this hot tick about Jared Kushner, a fledgling a hedge fund and investment fund manager, never having done it before, was able to, oh, I don't know, convince the Saudi government and its private investment fund, the PIF, to put $2 billion into, into Jared Kushner, this unproven, no track record um, a person who just happens to be the son-in-law of a former president. I'm, I'm sure the Saudis weren't trying to buy Donald Trump by giving the ne'er-do-well son-in-law Two billion dollars. I'm sure that wasn't their intent. How dare you? How dare you, audience, suggesting that Donald Trump is for sale just because he's told the public world um, in all of his filings in court that he can't scratch up enough money to post a $450 million bond. He'd have to fire sale his properties. He doesn't have enough cash, despite what he said on social media, in which he said he had enough cash. He's just told the world that he's for sale. You know who's not buying him? Ivanka and Jared. I mean, they could stroke a check for several hundred million dollars, even if they took deeds as collateral. Donald Trump claims Mar-a-Lago is worth a billion dollars. No support for that. Uh, 40 Wall Street, which is half empty, uh, is worth uh, $750 million, another made-up number. Uh, my triplex apartment is worth at least $100 million. I don't think so. Uh, but he could take, you know, if she's buying all of whatever he's selling and she doesn't think he's really hyperinflating all of these assets, then take the deeds. Take the deed from Mar-a-Lago. Give your old man $500 million. Go ahead. I dare you. Or do you find that your father is not a good credit risk, right? That he's not, that you can't lend him any money because he has no credit and you've discredited him. Is that what it is? 
because I can't figure it out. Now I get they're all gone into a bunker world and they're trying to hide. Maybe some of her real, uh, money's tied up in real estate. I get it. But she can't scratch up a few hundred million dollars to bail her father out of this problem. Instead, he has to publicly humiliate himself. I mean, I'm not sure he's capable of being humiliated. You have to have a conscience. You, you can't be um, a sociopath. But assuming he was able to be um, humiliated, he's being publicly humiliated by his own filings. And all along, Ivanka, we'll throw up some other picture, pictures, social life Barbie. Here I am in, you know, on a yacht. Here I am in Miami. Here I am courtside. Here I am with Jared. Right? I'll tell you where she's not. She's not picking up the phone and calling her financial advisor and wiring money to one daddy Trump. Or as I read somewhere on social media, instead of daddy Warbucks, like orphan Annie, he's daddy no bucks. I agree with that. Um, so, you know, it's the curious case of Ivanka Trump. She wants to stay close to daddy when he was the president, so close that she almost moved into the White House. She effectively was the first lady because our first lady, um, who was married to the president at the time, Melania, abdicated her responsibility and almost never appeared in anything. If she wasn't chopping down all the trees in the Rose Garden and putting up bloody red Christmas trees, Melania didn't have a taste for the job. Let's put it this way. She found it distasteful. And so Ivanka had to go to like all the events, which is fine because, you know, Donald Trump's made some disgusting comments in the past about Ivanka Trump, her body. Uh, he would have dated her if she wasn't his daughter. You know, other really depraved, disgusting things that nothing that a lifetime on a psychologist or psychiatrist count wouldn't help. A couch wouldn't help. But that's for another hot take. You all know I'm a coffee fanatic and I'm super excited to tell you about AeroPress. AeroPress coffee uses a patented brew method that gets the purest flavors from the beans and speeds things up so coffee doesn't get over-extracted. You get a smooth, rich, bitter-free cup of coffee that tastes as good as the smell of freshly roasted beans. AeroPress is like a French press that makes a way better cup of coffee. AeroPress uses a patented 3-in-1 brew technology that combines the flavor benefits of espresso, pour-over, and French press into one compact, portable device built for travel. You get a completely unique and delicious cup of coffee wherever you go, only possible with an AeroPress. With over 55,000 five-star reviews in over 60 countries, AeroPress is the best-reviewed coffee press on the planet. At just under 50 bucks and with all those great reviews, AeroPress makes an exceptional gift. Thoughtful, proven, tasty, and travel-oriented. Who wouldn't love that? Gift receipt not needed. AeroPress travels better than others, too. It's compact and incredibly durable. That means you'll never have to endure terrible coffee at the hotel, on the job, or on an adventure again. AeroPress brews and cleans in less than two minutes. Literally, add coffee, pour water, stir for 10 seconds, brew for 30, then press into your favorite mug, rinse, and enjoy. AeroPress is shockingly affordable, less than 50 bucks, and we've got an incredible offer for our audience. Visit AeroPress.com slash legal AF. That's A-E-R-O-P-R-E-S-S dot com slash legal AF, and use the promo code legal AF to save 20% off your order. That's aeropress.com slash legalaf, and be sure to use code legalaf at checkout to save 20%. It's time to ditch the drive through toss the French press, and say yes to better mornings fueled by better coffee. Aeropress ships to the USA and over 60 countries around the world, and we thank Aeropress for sponsoring our show. The curious case of Ivanka Trump is she made all of her money on the backs of daddy, right? She's the granddaughter of Fred Trump. She's the daughter of Donald Trump. Every dime he's ever made, he shared some way, somehow with his kids. She's grifted on top of that. You know, there's estimates that she made $750 million or more while she was in office. I've seen the number literally, get this number, $640 million while they were special assistants to the president. They came in with $750. Add another $640, and then, in, and then a natural asset increase over time, I'm, I think they're really worth $2 billion, plus the $2 billion, which you can't really touch, $2 billion, but all the fees that he earns managing the Saudis' money because he's the son-in-law of the president. As I said, if she was named Ivanka Goldberg, she would not be doing anywhere close to as well as she's doing, yet she doesn't feel compelled to loan Donald Trump money. And if I'm a bank or a surety or a bonding company, 
some sort of lender. I got to think, that's odd. You're a multi-billionaire by self-proclamation. Your children think that they have a lot of money. I mean, Ivanka and Jared do and probably are worth a couple of billion. Why are you struggling so much to get people to support you? Because let's be frank, they're not going to be duped again. And if daddy goes down the drain, the proverbial, you know, he's circling the drain now. And if he goes completely down the drain, they don't want to be sucked down with him. They rode that horse as far as they could and gained all of the benefits from doing so, including base effectively moving into the West Wing. But as soon as daddy got into trouble, daddy got a judge to be a fraudster. Daddy over, tried to overthrow democracy. Then it's like, uh, let me see the Miami social calendar, please. Where can I be and in what gown can I be wearing? But that should be a reflection. That should be an indication. If you're a third party who's considering, you're a, a person considering voting for somebody, don't you have to wonder what it means? Because it means something. That Ivanka is not stepping forward with Jared to help out and bail out that. And if he's not, why are we going to do it? Why is the American people going to bail out Donald Trump? Because that's all this is, his run, his run for office again. It's a major bailout that we're watching in real time, in slow motion and in real time. We're, we're bailing him out if he's elected. The people that vote for him are bailing him out, I should say, better use of pronouns, of his legal problems, of his criminal liability problems, of his money problems, um, and the rest. It's a bailout. It's a Trump bailout. He just call it that. When he sends around all of those emails every time, you know, because of something he did wrong, there's a repercussion or consequence and then uses it to grift on the back of it. An email, he's just called for what it is. The Ray line, RE line for his email should just say, um, major bailout for me. One that I can't go to my family for because they've abandoned me. I'm a, I'm a, I'm a poor, abandoned elderly retiree from Florida whose family won't call, visit, write, or drop off a check for $500 million. You know, that kind of person. So I, I would be remiss, and we would be remiss on the Midas Dutch Network and on Legal AF if we gave Ivanka a pass. Because you got to call it out. It's the, it's the 800-pound gorilla in the room. He's got supremely wealthy children that have abandoned him, and for good reason. And now he's left with putting him up for sale at an auction to the highest bidder, foreign or domestic, to compromise a person who's running for the highest office in the land. And if that's okay with some large percentage of America, there's not much I can do about it other than to shine a light on it and talk about it and um, call it out. You can do it. Just understand what you're doing. Acknowledge I would have a lot more um, respect for those across the aisle who are thinking about voting for Donald Trump if they would just admit rather than try to uh, dissemble and deflect and lie about their candidate. Just admit, if you admit it and say, I'm going to do it anyway, you know, list all the things about him and then next to each one say, but I'm going to vote for him anyway. You know, the 91 felony counts minus a few that just got dismissed in Georgia. I'm, but I'm going to vote for him anyway. The $465 million judgment for fraud and a finding of persistent fraud for 10 years in his business operations. But I'm going to vote for him anyway. The uh, judged being a rapist, serial defamer, and a uh, person that has to pay not one, but two judgments to the same person, totaling over $100 million. But I'm going to vote for him anyway. Right? You see where this is going? Um, a person who's about to be convicted in New York for crimes related to books and records and has already been convicted through his company 17 times for tax evasion, but I'm going to vote for him anyway. Um, a person whose CFO and all major people involved with him in the operation of business have gone to jail. And you can start with Michael Cohen and you can end with Alan Weisselberg and people in between, but I'm going to vote for him anyway. A person who has gone bankrupt in almost every business venture that he's found, founded or started or, or has just recently been adjudged a fraudster in his current operation, a company he inherited from his father. But I will vote for him anyway. See, then, you know, and I'm not even done. 
a person who tried to use through various means, as alleged in all the indictments, underhanded methods and criminal conduct to overthrow democracy and the will of the people. But I am going to vote for him anyway. And so, um, and I could, I could go on. Bonding, company, bonding companies, insurance companies, banks, uh, lenders, counterparties, auditors, accountants, all firing him. But I'm going to vote for him anyway. That's it. All I want is an honest dialogue. And you should have an honest dialogue with yourself about who and what you're voting for. It can't always be Donald Trump's excuse, which is, it's not me, it's the other guy. I didn't do it. <laughs> I didn't, I didn't, I, you know, I'm indicted in four different states across federal and state processes, but I didn't do it. You know, I, I got bad judges. I've got uh, people, except when I like the judges. It's always I got bad judges. Like, I don't like Judge Angoron. I don't like Judge uh, this one or that one, you know, Judge Chutkin. But I love the ones where they rule in favor of me. You know, they're, they're, they're great judges, McAfee and, and Judge um, Cannon. Look, the curious case of Ivanka Trump, socialite Barbie, abandoning her father, is just a series, one in a series as 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 the president of the United States makes his closing argument to the American people of things that should be considered. If your own children won't lend you, you know, buddy, can you spare $550 million, $600 million? And the answer is no. What does that tell you about the character of the person, the self-interest of the person, and and the family that you're that you're thinking about voting into the White House? We'll continue to cover it on the Midas Touch Network on Legal AF every Wednesday and Saturday at 8 p.m. Eastern time, right here on the Midas Touch Network. Free subscribe and go bring them the three million before the election. It's that important. It's the network you're building, right? We have no outside investors. We have no um, you know, we're grassroots. You're it, man. You're you are building the network as we're flying it. And if you like what I'm doing, I'm Michael Popak. Give me a thumbs up. Um, and uh you can leave a comment. Helps with the ratings, helps keep the the this content on the air. And so until my next hot take, until my next legal AF. This is Michael Popak reporting. Love this video? Make sure you stay up to date on the latest breaking news and all things Midas by signing up to the Midas Touch newsletter at MidasTouch.com newsletter.